The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, wrong video. Hi everyone, before we get started, oh, let me move over. Okay, before we get started, I just wanna make it very clear that this is going to be a very personal video. So if you don't like personal videos, this is not for you, okay. So I just wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way because I know sometimes people don't like it when I make videos where I talk about like my life and whatnot or they don't like it when other people do that. Just letting you all know, it's a personal one. So yeah, if you're not here for it, bye-bye. For a few months, I've been giving Kicking It, yes, the Disney XD show, a rewatch. Why? Have you been rewatching a white ass show about East Asian martial arts, you may ask? Well, I am overpowered grief, and this has contributed to me regaining memory of certain parts of my childhood that I purposely blocked out as a trauma response. So, a year ago, I'd say two years ago specifically, I talked about how I was a big fan of the series and so much of that is just me slowly remembering my Kicking It fangirl phase and oh damn it's so annoying. Aside from watching Kicking It for the slow burn romance between Kim and Jack, I also just watched it for Kim because she was my favorite character and in my opinion she's one of the best things about this damn show because woohoo this show needed work and a sensitivity team. Kicking it is low key trash, but it's my trash, okay? Kim was the kind of person I aspired to be like at that time. Even though Kim wasn't perfect, I'd say, she was confident, she had friends she could trust, and she knew how to defend herself. Those were the things I wish I had at that age. And around the same time, that was when Monster High began to put out their animated movies and 13 Wishes came out and I had only watched that film once at the time and I loved it ever since. This was because the film focused on the character Halloween Wolf, who wasn't much different than who I was at that time in my life. Halloween is nothing like Kim. If anything, she's the complete opposite of her. She was a lot like me. She didn't fit in. She didn't quite understand that it was okay for her to be different. Also, she got bullied quite a lot and yeah, I could relate to that a lot. While everyone was big fans of her older sister and her brother Claudine and Claude, I was a fan of Halloween because I saw so much of myself in her. And I currently see a lot of my adult self in Gulia, but that's another topic for another discussion. Y'all want a video about that? I'll make it. Anyway. When I found out Monster High was making a comeback, I was excited, but that quickly went away because I wasn't interested in the new generation for numerous reasons. Gen 3 of Monster High gets a lot of hate and I don't want to feel as though this is a contribution to that, even though a lot of the criticism I see towards Gen 3 is very much valid. The thing I found out that really made me not want to watch the new series was when I found out that Claudia and Howlene were no longer Claudine's siblings and it's kind of as if they treat Claudia as if she doesn't exist. As I still had the version of Monster High that I grew up with, I told myself that was all that mattered and it wasn't going anywhere. I can still watch the webisodes and the movies that came out in the 2010s. Many people have complained about how much they don't like the new gen as they change certain characters. And while that annoyed me, I wouldn't necessarily say it bothered me. All except for the changes made to Howling Wolf. This one struck a nerve. And for the longest, I couldn't put my finger on why this change bothered me so much. Now, why the fuck does Howling's change make me so upset? It bothered me so much because she's not even close to being the same person that she was originally made to be. Her entire purpose has changed. That is not the same character. That's a completely different person that just shares the same name as her.
Hey y'all, it's Harriana back with another video. Hi, hello, how are you doing? My name is Harriana and welcome to a welcome back to the Pirate Ship, also known as Harry Hooks Pirate Ship. I am the captain, you are not my first mate. I don't got no first mate because you wanna know why. Bring your ear closer to the speaker so you can hear me clearly. Nobody's worthy of being the first mate. Also, you like my lip color? It's a new color I added to my shop called Tonji, but you can't buy it yet because it's not on the shop yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Harriana and I like to make content based on nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. I am here with the long-awaited Howling Wolf video that I have been thinking about making since the month of November but I just kept putting it all simply because I felt like I was just being extremely emotional about this right here but no your voice matters speak up do what the fuck you want before I move forward there I just want to make a brief little announcement I am having of everything must go clearance sale to celebrate Black History Month woo woo Everything is marked down to 65% off. Yes, literally everything, even the bonnets. Basically, I'm just making space for the new collection that I have coming in April. I have tons of new products. I am adding another new Monster High product too, just as well. I will be restocking the Frankie bonnet. Hopefully, I can get around to restocking it. But yeah, I just am making new space. So everything is marked down until February 29th. So if you guys would like to purchase, cool with me completely optional the link to that will be down below and i will get it shipped out to you as soon as possible so yeah let's move forward now who exactly is howling wolf if you've been following me y'all know that howling is my favorite monster high character as i stated in the beginning for a long story short she is claudine's little sister there are four siblings in the wolf family of monster high we're specifically talking about gen one and gen two it is claudia who is the oldest then we have claude then we have Claudine and then we have Howling. Out of the, all four of them, Claudia is the only one who is grown. She's out of high school and she doesn't live with the family. She lives in a whole nother country. And because of Claudia being older, she doesn't live with the family. She's out doing whatever the fuck. The main three that we usually see have to be Claudine, Howling, and Claude. But when it comes to those three, Howling is the one that just kind of sits everything out and then Claudine because she's one of the main girls and then Claude because Claude is dating Claudine's friend, Draculaura. Howling is a character I'd say is extremely uncool and that's why we like her. Now, why do I say she's uncool? Well, first of all, I, she's cool to me. I think she's cool. <laughs> But when I say she isn't seen as like a cool girl, she's not popular. She dresses different than a lot of her peers. Okay, can we even say that she really dresses different? Because everybody at that damn school dresses funky. But I'm mainly talking about the first outfit that she wore. Her hair was even completely different than a lot of the other people's because she had her hair in an afro and then she ended up wearing it straight and pink and then i know she ended up getting like puff balls pink puff balls which has to be one of my favorite hairstyles that she's worn but we rarely ever saw her in this shit so she's basically an outcast she lives in her sister and her brother's shadow and i even say she lives in claudia's shadow too just as well to a certain extent she really only has like one close friend and if we see her hanging out with other people it's usually like claudine's friends and she's just like around them we see that she doesn't necessarily get along with her siblings normal she is very loud she's very rambunctious she's also very emotional she kind of cries a lot <laughs> she, she, oh she was so much like me at that age but for the most part Howling is a girl unhinged <laughs> and so much of her story has to do with the fact that she wants to fit in she wants to have a boyfriend she just wants to be popular like her older sister but she's always in her shadow and that just has to do with the fact that they're just two completely different people so later on down the line we found out that Howling gets a makeover first of all I'm not a fan of this makeover. <laughs> I like her first outfit better. Her second outfit, she cute, she all right, but I prefer the first outfit so much more. And we see that part of the reason why she gets this makeover is because she thinks it would make her fit in a little bit better. She thinks it would make her more popular. She thinks people would like her more if she changed the entire way that she looked. I'm not even joking when I tell you that I didn't even recognize that that was Howling. Like when I first watched 13 Wishes, I was like, what do you mean that's Howling? And they're like, that's her. That's her. And I was like, I low-key feel like they changed the way she looked because the first Halloween design, she looked too much like Torilai. I'm not even joking. They, they look similar. And I know it had to do with the fact that they said her first design was boyish and that take pissed me off so bad. Ooh. But that is just like a brief summary of who Halloween's character is. 
and her entire purpose in the first and second generation of Monster High is that she is just Claudine's annoying little sister. She even said to herself that that is what people view her as. Little sister, so much of her character has to do with her dynamic with her siblings. Now why exactly do I like Howling's character so much? I've always liked Howling from the beginning, especially when it came to her design, but the main reason I like her character so much is because of how much she reminds me of myself at that age. And it also has to do with the fact that she's one of the few black characters that I saw animated specifically that reminded me of myself. Because I have opened up before about characters that I could relate to a lot when I was younger. Ty Lee has to be one of them. Ty Lee from Avatar Last Airbender. Another one would have to be Lil Devel from All Grown Up. But I say one of the most accurate depictions of who I was when I was in like my last year of middle school and my first few years of high school most definitely was Halloween Wolf. Halloween is a character that I feel as though she can't catch a break because she's always trying to make the next move. She's always doing things that end up getting her in trouble. She's constantly just making bad decisions. And I like to call Monster High 13, which is the movie where Howling Wolf is just making bad decisions. A lot of people's understanding of Howling comes from this one specific movie because I felt like this was the time that we got to spend the most time with this character. We're not talking about Gen 3 yet. If you haven't seen Monster High 13 Wishes, there are issues with oriental orientalism with this movie. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not educated enough to talk about that. So yeah, people were asking me why didn't I talk about that when I made my video about Monster High 13 Wishes. And y'all, I'm just simply not educated enough to speak on it. Okay, like not even trying to say that in a rude way. I just don't want to sit here and talk deeply about something that I know I need to do quite a bit more research on. But the main reason why I wanted to speak about Black girlhood and that movie had to do with the fact that that is something that I could relate to. I'm very open about no longer speaking on things that I don't fully understand. So yeah. In the movie Monster High 13 wishes it's really just howling with the most unhinged ass behaviors ever she ends up finding a lamp after her ass gets sent to detention for almost blowing up the school and she uses her 13 wishes as a way to try to become more popular and she wants to become more accepted she ends up doing favors for other people like first thing she did was get her sister and her friends out of detention got that done and then she starts helping Laguna with the drama that she had going on with her boyfriend and his family first of all I can't stand this relationship L Laguna and Gil the most toxic as a shit ever I remember somebody had went off on me because I was talking about how I don't like the way Gil handled that entire thing with Laguna's like having beef with his family because they came from like different types of water and somebody went off on me talking about why are you sitting here calling Gil racist and I was like I never called him racist I was just saying that he, he could have did better to defend his girlfriend but anyway so she wants to help the relationship with Laguna and Gil and she's constantly just going around doing favors for other people thinking that this will have her becoming more accepted as somebody who used to go around and do favors for people all the time growing up I understand completely but because of this she still is getting bullied she ends up crying in the bathroom happened to me where I was getting bullied in the bathroom and started crying. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, that movie hit too close to home. <laughs> she ends up making more and more bad decisions with these wishes and she starts doing things for her benefit. She starts making very selfish choices. She gets Cleo back. I'm glad she did. That's what Cleo get for picking on her. And she starts becoming a very mean and vile nasty person because she's just so fed up with the way people are treating her. That is just the moral of the story for when it comes to how lean and mom to her 13 wishes and a lot of people were talking about how this is a good movie if you want to see the dynamic with her and Claudine because we finally get to pick up on why Halloween acts the way she does towards Claudine and that's because we get to see Claudine interact with her friends in front of Halloween and she says how much different she treats her than her. I like Claudine's character of course she's not perfect but it makes complete sense why Halloween felt that way towards her because she saw how different she spoke to her. Like I said in my last video about Monster High, as someone who is the youngest child, as someone who is like one of the youngest of my cousins, I don't like it when my cousins and my older sibling talk to me like they are my parent. I don't like it when they talk to me like I am a little child. It really frustrates me. We don't like that, y'all. And part of the reason that Monster High 13 Wishes really stuck with me had to do with the fact that I did have an incident when I was in high school where I really did want to 
fit in and I didn't want to be accepted. And if you guys are familiar with this thing called the web assign, I for one was really good at chemistry in high school. That's one thing a lot of people don't know about me. I was really, really good at chemistry. I don't know if I'm still good at it now, but at that time I was good because I realized a lot of it was just low key kind of like basic math. But because I was actually doing good in this class, I was actually getting good grades on my web assigns and whatnot, my friends had started asking me to like hey if i pay you to do my homework for me would you do it and i was like yeah sure just send me the login information give me like the little two dollars and i'll go ahead and do the test for you listen it's one thing when i was doing it for my test but then when word got around that i knew how to do um the web assign and no one else didn't that's when things started to spiral because it was this one popular girl that i followed on instagram and she was like does anybody can anybody help me out with my chemistry homework and i was like oh i can help you and i like messaged her i dm'd her and she was like can you just do it for me and i pay you and i was like yeah sure i will you know do it for you so i went in did it for her i did it quickly too because i pretty much knew all the answers it was wasn't that much different than mine with the exception of some different equation numbers and whatnot so i went and then sent it to her she paid me the next day and the next thing you know i found out that she go around and she tell everybody that i did her web assignment for her and i got her an a because yeah i was smart duh so that is when her friends started messaging me asking hey can you do my web assignment for me hey can you do my web assignment for me heck you do my web assignment for me and i was going around and mind you like all of them were popular too just as well i'm just a little nerdy girl sitting on the side have my nails looking all funky because this is actually when i still used to wear my nails long and i did nail art and i just be in class like reading a little book or whatnot like this is when i was really kind of like more shy and mousy like i've always been a nat like a naturally loud person i was a theater kid but when it came to me interacting with like other classmates i was just kind of mm. so i had all these people coming up to me and asking me can i do this favor for them and I was just saying yes because like I said I really just wanted to be accepted by my peers because like I said I just didn't really fit in all that well and my friends have caught on to this and they were like are you sure that you can handle this this is just a lot of stuff that you need to do are you good are you fine are these people taking advantage of you and my ass sat there and I said no and lied and it just like really really frustrated me because I ended up finding out that the people that I was doing these web assignments for they weren't paying me and they were like oh no what's okay girl I'll pay you I'll pay you after you do this and then I'll pay you for the last one I'm telling you these people they owe me so much money at the end of the semester and this was like a mess because I ended up finding out this literally like a good hour before i had my chemistry final and i found out that all these people was talking about oh no we were not gonna pay her we were just gonna have her do this and i just kind of like blew up and i ended up cussing at my chemistry teacher it was bad it was a mess and i was just crying my ass off it was terrible so when he asked me why did you cuss at me like that because you never do that you'll never act that way and i sat there and i told him i was like i've been doing people's web signs for them and, and they said they were gonna pay me and they didn't so he was happy that I told him what happened. He wasn't happy with the fact that I was doing people's homework for them. But he was happy with the fact that I had told him. But he also told me that I really could have gotten in trouble. And he asked me, did I know what I was doing was wrong? And I told him, no, I didn't know I couldn't do that. Like... But that situation ended up getting handled. I was crying so bad. One of my friends, her name's Kenyatta. We're still friends now. She was there with me because she was she was literally helping me. She was literally my Twyla at the time that shit was happening. I was crying my ass off. It was really, really bad. But most of my 13 wishes reminded me so much of this specific situation. And that is part of the reason why I cried so much when I had rewatched the movie when I was grown because howling i see you i get you girl i completely understand why you did the things you did <laughs> was she right no did i understand it completely one of my favorite types of stories is like girlhood unhinged or like a woman unhinged and i consider monster high 13 wishes to be like a girl unhinged film this movie right here is my joker okay i adore this film this is literally one of my top 20 favorite movies ever and so much of that had just had to do with the fact that it related so much to my teenhood so now that you guys are aware of why I love Monster High 13 Wishes and Howling Wolf so much let me talk a little bit more about her entire purpose within this story because Howling as a character I'd say isn't necessarily as important as like Torlai or like the other more side characters I low-key feel like I could say that she 
Caddy Noir was a bit more important, but that's mainly because we thought, because Caddy sung, that's why we thought she was super important. But she wasn't super big like the big five, the main five of Monster High, and then like Torlai and the other smaller, like other side characters that walk him in and out and whatnot. Howling was another one of those side characters that I say that was very much prominent, even though they didn't necessarily do that much with her. But because of the movie they had for her, the impact that she had, that's why so many people remember her. But her entire purpose is just being that girl the one that lives in everyone else's shadow and she wants to stand out and you know be she just wants to be somebody she wants to be accepted she wants to be loved opposed to a character like Torlai who I find out that they didn't even change all that much glad they didn't do that Torlai is just a girl that needs help first of all how Ling and Torlai are they both need help when they was both about to fight each other I completely understood it I was on how Ling's side by the way whatever Torlai did she did it whatever how Ling said Torlai did she did it Torlai is a character that's just like a mess like how Ling is but we find out so much of her bad behavior has to do with the fact that she just had to struggle her entire life and she used to be up in juvie we find out a lot of how Ling's concerning behaviors have to do with the fact that she doesn't necessarily get along well with her siblings but also on top of the fact that she is getting bullied at school. You both have these two outcast characters that have different purposes within the series and I deeply appreciate that. Howling and Torlai are characters that both aren't cool by like you know the standards of what's going on in the society they're in but that's why we appreciate them and that's why they're so memorable. While Howling is more the mousy kind of quiet girl that is just trying to do what she does and ends up making and bad choices. Torlai is the much more chaotic version of that and she came from a different background so of course she's gonna act different than Howling does. But I personally feel like there's a lot more favoritism when it comes to Torlai's character than it does Howling because I feel like a lot of the characters in Gen 3 ended up getting so many changes some for the better and some for the worse but when I looked at the material that was given for Torlai and I saw what they ended up doing with Howling I was I am a bit angry. One thing I really loved about Monster High has to be the sibling dynamic between Claude, Howling, and Claudine. I come to find out when Gen 3 comes out, like I said, I don't want to sit here and make people think that this is a video of me just shitting on Gen 3 because absolutely fucking not. Nada, no. Gen 3 hate discourse has just kind of gotten stale. Everybody has said what needed to be said and a lot of people don't even bother sitting here and watch the show. Like me. Not watching it. I kind of don't care. Yada yada yada. But a lot of the information that I ended up finding out about what was done with these three particular characters really frustrated me. Claude, I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to the four siblings, I personally just didn't care too much for him outside of his relationship with Draculaura. Claudia just don't exist, which kind of makes sense because Monster High takes place at the school. Even though I do like Claudia's character, I get why that she's not in here. But Halloween wasn't Claudine's little sister any longer. And I'm pretty sure that they are the same age in this new version. But also, it's not the fact that they didn't make Claudine and Howling's sisters that bothered me so much. It's what they ended up doing with Howling's character in general. They made Howling cool. No, <laughs> she's not. Like part of the reason we liked the original Howling had to do with the fact that she was a hot ass mess. She was quirky, she was loud, she was extremely in your face, she was insecure, she was dorky, she was a mess. And I appreciate very flawed characters like that, especially because we weren't really seeing a lot of black animated female characters, female girl characters specifically around that time period. Animation treats black people like ass in general, specifically Western animation. Anime does too just as well. That's another topic for another discussion. So it was really nice to see them create this complex black character that they still treated to be human. That's something that we weren't really getting at that time. And I feel like we're getting that a lot more now with there being more diversity behind the scenes and with the way people have been, you know, doing better with these stories. Because I remember I talked about how I've always loved the character Princess Tiana, but I was talking about why I liked her character character so much more into almost their book which is basically kind of like what rewrote the last fourth of the princess and the frog movie is that we allow we were allowed to see tiana be a much more flawed person because we did see that tiana had flaws in the original princess and the frog but so much of that movie was just her being the bigger person and just taking being beat up beating up on here we get to see her be selfish we get to see her make be 
like make bad decisions we actually get to see tiana be a bitch like we saw tiana be a bitch in the original movie to naveen he deserved that but here we actually get to see her be a bitch to dr facilier and it was something so refreshing to see because i love it when i see that people give these nuances to these black female characters in our media because oftentimes when it comes to black female characters in our media they either make them extremely tokenized where they borderline have no personality and they all are just copy clones of each other oftentimes they're voiced by Chris Summer or they're just the villain of the story they're just heavily villainized even though Hao Lin was the person that was causing utter destruction with a lot of her storyline in Monster High 13 Wishes but even in them damn webisodes I personally don't think that the story villainized her because they still had that understanding about the decision she was making she wasn't doing shit just to be mean we realized that she was just doing shit because she was hurting that's part of the reason why I have such a big <coughs> oh shit it's part of the reason why I had such a big issue when it came to the writing for Brit and Tiff's characters. One, because they mainly were like the only important girls of color in the show and they were the villains. But also there was no understanding about why they acted the way they did. They were just spoiled brats. And that's another reason why I had so much frustration with Miranda's character in As Told by Ginger because we didn't really get much of an understanding why she acted the way she did. She was just a bitch. With Halloween on the other hand, we got to learn more about her, you know, rage that was building up and it just exploded when i talk about feminine rage films i'm always going to sit here and recommend monster high 13 wishes because that entire movie was just black female rage and i appreciate that because that is something that we rarely get to see in western animation she's literally like a cool girl now in the new generation she looks different she looks a little bit more similar to her original design because they ended up giving her orange hair back baby that was a four feet afro this is a texturizer what's that what is that but anyway i saw the new design and i was just like mm, i'm not necessarily a fan of a lot of the new monster high designs anyway but like i say it don't fucking matter so i was like mm, not a fan of the design and also i did have some concerns about the way they originally dressed Halloween in the first generation i ain't gonna talk about that because there are some things i really think they could have changed with her outfits because i was like why is she wearing that moving forward i do appreciate that they had adjusted some of the changes with her clothing even though i don't necessarily like the outfits all that much i was a little frustrated with them getting rid of her like 4c tight afro because that is something that i wish we would see more of within animation but it might have been something to do with how there might have been trouble animating it i don't freaking know but it's just she literally is like hbic now like of her little circle she's low-key hbic she's the head of the pack she's a cool girl and i'm just like who is this harpo who is this woman <laughs> i'm just like you know what no because i was already on thin ice with gen 3 and not really wanting to watch it because i found out that there wasn't really going to be that claudine and howling sibling dynamic anymore i was like all right whatever i simply just thought they weren't gonna put howling in gen 3 at all but then when i found out they put her in there and then they ended up doing some really out of the ass shit where they made her and claudine long lost cousins i i, I don't like that i personally just not a fan of that type of storytelling i don't like the long lost thing in general that's just a personal thing for me this entire video is personal in general but seeing that they just did an entire 180 on her character really just put like a bad taste in my mouth and i'm not sitting here and saying that monster high could not have had this type of character in their show but personally that's not howling wolf i don't know who that is you literally just changed the entire purpose of howling in monster high you changed everything about her except for her name. You even changed her relation to one of the main characters. Instead of making her her little sister that she saw all, all the time and lived with, you ended up making her her long lost cousin that she didn't know anything about until she really came into the school. On top of the fact that you made her confident in the HBIC. Baby, that's not Howling Wolf. That is not the Howling Wolf that we have grown and known to love. That is a completely different girl. I don't know who that is. While I understand that there are always going to be different variations of characters throughout the years, we can sit here and even mention that when it comes to the subject of Greek mythology. I have an entire video coming up about Megara next month, okay? Y'all sit tight for that. We can sit here and say that there are so many different versions of characters throughout their media, but it gets to a point where they are like 
completely different and when do we start to realize that this person may just be an original character when are we gonna sit here and realize that they are not the same being that they were once before like we have like the different variations of characters from scooby-doo even though they change up the characters every so often in the different scooby-doo films and shows that come out we can still sit here and say yeah that's fred yeah that's daphne yeah that's velma yeah that's shaggy norval <laughs> I'm sorry, when I figured out his name was Norval, I laughed for like 10 minutes straight. We sit here and we know that those are those characters. When we talk about Greek mythology, we look at the key characteristics of these characters and we sit here and we know exactly who they are. Even though I have my opinions about how Disney did a low-key 180 when it comes to Hercules and that film, we can still sit here and say it's Hercules because that main trait about him being like indestructible, low-key a Captain Man <laughs> before Captain Man. I really made a Henry Danger reference in this video. Yeah, what is going on? We still sit here and know that that's Hercules because he still has his strength. He is still the son of Zeus. We know all of this. We still know that that is the exact same person. Even though it is very much inaccurate to who he actually was, I'm telling y'all, I can't wait for y'all to watch that bigger video I got working. I'm cooking, I'm cooking, I'm cooking. It is not new or different for there to be different variations of characters that are already in existing IP. But there becomes a fine line when a lot of these characters become completely different than what they are. And I see that this is a big um, concern that a lot of people have with the character of Dracula. But this also is another concern that a lot of people have with the monster from Frankenstein. And I feel like Monster High high key is a contribution to this why so many people think that that monster's name is actually Frankenstein the monster doesn't have a name y'all the monster's name is just the monster Frankenstein is the man who created him he is the scientist he is a bitch by the way I hate him he's my enemy I think I'm gonna give Frankenstein a rewatch because Victor Frankenstein I'm gonna run up on him right up on that hoe. So what they did is something that isn't completely, you know, new. Them sitting here and making changes to characters that already exist. But it just got to the point where there's, who is this girl? That is not the same person. It's just really down to the fact that, okay, we have this girl who is the leader of the pack. She's a cool girl. She fits in. She's this and that and the third. She's HBIC. I said HBIC probably three times in this video. I don't know. I just love saying HBIC because I consider myself an HBIC. But I'm like, if y'all were going to do this, y'all could have just made a new character. Monster High is nothing new when it comes to the making new characters. Because every so often, with every little Monster High movie they came out with, every new doll release and whatnot, they added new characters to the bunch to the point where it became oversaturated. And I started to lose count of who was who. I started to forget who was who. And I just started to realize that I just forgot about certain characters because I forgot Honey Swamp. I forgot all about her ass until somebody had mentioned to me about her hair and I was like she did exist. She was there. Monster High has so many different characters that they have made over the years. Was it really that difficult for y'all to sit here and make a new character? Y'all could have just made a new character. It's okay. feel like a lot of people just have petty reasons for why they don't want to sit and watch a show, which they have the right to do so. And I also feel like it is a bit petty of me not really wanting to watch Gen 3 because of what they did with Howling. But also, I can sit here and not watch something for any reason that I want. <laughs> Howling is a character that's just always extremely special to me, but I always known her to be like that. I always knew her to be that younger version of myself. I always think back to that time period of my life when I did similar things to her that she did in Monster High 13 Wishes. Seeing that what they did to my favorite Monster High character in the new generation, while I wouldn't necessarily say that it's massage noir or anything like this, I low-key feel like it's kind of like a character assassination situation because who is that? So like exactly who is this character? That is not the Han Lane that I have grown and known to love. Like I said, I didn't want people to sit here and think I was going to be making a Monster High hate video because I wasn't. I was just talking about a bit of my frustrations when it came to what they have done with Howling. There are so many people out here that just get on here and drag the new Monster High generation to hell and back for whatever. Personally, I have not watched the new Monster High like live action movies because y'all know exactly how I felt about them. I just don't want to. These films are not for me. Like I said, I'm not 
like I'm not a teenager anymore. I'm grown. I am an adult. I have just kind of like moved past this. And this new current generation is for like, you know, the younger demographic. I still have the original Monster High films. I still have the original Monster High web series. And I do go back and I rewatch those movies. And I do sit here and I rewatch those webisodes. I'm not like, like I said, I don't want people to think that this is just me sitting here shitting on the current Monster High generation because it already gets dragged so much. And it also looks like Nickelodeon is trying to K-word the show because I ended up finding out that they gave it a really really bad time slot they gave it a two o'clock time slot on the weekday and I was like "Ooh, y'all trying to get rid of this show y'all trying to find an excuse not to put Monster High out no more it might be because it might be expensive to make this series I don't know but Monster High is something that always just they they might have should have made it a web series they might have just do better making the films and specials and whatnot it's just i haven't really been satisfied with this new generation of monster high but also at the same time it's not for me it doesn't really matter if it satisfies me or not and that's okay it's just it's just there and this most likely is the only video y'all are gonna get from me speaking about this current generation anymore. I have spoken up about like some frustrations I've had in the past with the live action casting and whatnot, but I was just really irritated with just this one change here. And it just kind of took me a while to process why it bothered me so bad because I was like, it can't sit here and be bothering you for no reason. You gotta have a reason why this irritates you. And I was like, yeah, because they literally changed everything that you loved about your favorite Monster High character that's why you're upset if you like the current monster high generation great i love that for you okay and i hope you're having a good time i hope that you're enjoying it i hope you're liking the new dolls i hope you're liking the live action films i no, I, I just can't bring myself to watch them but personally like i said instead of just sitting here and complaining about the current monster high generation i can just go back and look at the original version that i have just grown to know and love and that's okay that's completely okay. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Um, some of you guys have been asking if I've been watching the current generation of Monster High and I just kind of feel like I wanted to give you guys a little explanation about why I just kind of don't really care to watch it because it's just something personal with me. Nothing against the series or whatnot. It's just I'm not interested in it whatsoever and it's okay. I'm allowed not to really care about certain things but thank you guys so much for watching this video. I definitely do appreciate it. I didn't, I was going to sit here and put on my Halloween Wolf cosplay but I just, I'm in a time crunch right now. I have a new cosplay that I have to make that is nowhere near finished. I have a presentation that I have have to finish for the event that I'm going to be at this weekend. I'm drained. I'm actually very, very tired and I'm a little stressed out. And I also have the orders that I need to take care of. Everything, like I said, is 65% off um, on my website here, yadahook.com. I also have a blog on my website too, just as well. It's not just the shop. Um, I try to upload it twice a month, like update it twice a month, and I still gotta get that other upload too. So yeah, I just time crunch mode. How only wolf cosplay can wait. I am gonna be debuting a new Howling Wolf cosplay later on this year, and I cannot wait for you all to see it. I'm not gonna tell you guys which Howling Wolf look I'm doing, but yeah, I have been wanting to cosplay like other Monster High characters, but it hasn't really been like the main characters. I really been wanting to cosplay Torlai. I really been wanting to do Honey Swamp. I really haven't wanted to do Honey Swamp too, but Torlai, Howling, and Honey Swamp, those are really like the only three. But it's like, yeah, I just gotta make sure I got my stuff together. Cosplay, y'all, is like another craft of art. And I feel like a lot of people don't seem to understand why we love this hobby so much. It's something that makes me happy and it's something that I adore. But I'll make sure I put in like a picture of my Howling Wolf cosplay on my own community tab if you guys want to see that. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for watching this video. I said that already, but yeah, um, I'm about to go edit this. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a long night. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, night, whatever time of the day you chose to watch this video. I'm just thankful that you watched it with the ads on. All right, thank you, and goodbye. That you see, you should be aware of the power of three. They come to fight as fast as they can. They're dangerous yet fabulous. Because the utonia made them is true. They are the colors of pink, green, and blue. They'll catch you in the blink of an eye and do it all before the time. They come in through and fight, and everyone they're shocking. You know, no one can stop them all because of the chemical that they come. Just for your mind
mind Buttercup I fell in three at a time Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt And blossom will leave them out of their rut Cherishing power puff two of a kind Both wanna save the world before bad times From Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA The power puff girls are just here to stay They coming through and fighting And everyone they shocking You know no one can stop them all Because of the 